right, it's finally here. The Legend of Heroes Trails Through Daybreak is out. Hey everyone, I'm Clayton Morris. Welcome in to the channel. So today I thought I would come here and review. It is daybreak. I'm on a trail with my dog today and I've been playing the game now for the past couple of weeks. NIS America was kind enough to send me the game. And I have to say I'm about 25 hours into the game. Uh, just about halfway through chapter three, there are five chapters in this game. So I have a really good handle on the story, the combat, and I wanted to come in and talk about it today. So join me on this trail as we talk about the latest Trails game. Come on. So let me just say right out of the gate that I'm a newbie to the Trails series. I know it's blasphemy. I've never played a Trails game, but I have been recently on the hunt to go back and start at number one, go back to the PSP and play the first first one and play all the way through all of the games. And there's many games. I think, I think 10, I think this is the 11th. If I'm not mistaken, correct me. I'm sure you will if I'm wrong about that. Uh, so I'm coming at this from a total newbie perspective, and like I said, if you're one of these people who hangs out in Reddit forums and you know all of the Trails chronology, you know all of the storylines through the Crossbell duology and all of those things, great, that's amazing, um, but I am a newbie to the series, so go easy on me. Maybe if you're a newbie as well, you're wondering, can I jump into the series starting here? And I will attempt to answer that question in today's video, so let's dive into this. So this game originally released in Japan in 2021, finally makes its way to North America and Europe. It is the first game in the Trails Daybreak story arc following the completion of the Azure Sky series. That was really what roped me in to say, okay, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start here. This is the beginning of a whole new story arc. And as a newbie, this is a great place to jump in. Now, as someone new to this series, I'll admit there were moments I felt completely lost, bombarded with jargon, like, who are Spriggans? I'm told people often refer to you as a Spriggan. Bracers. What is Mira? Mira is money, by the way. And it can feel a little bit like, you know, showing up to a party where everyone has inside jokes, <laughs> you know, and you're kind of like, ah, oh, great, you guys all have a lot of inside jokes here. Uh, but that was not the case. It kind of felt that way at the beginning. But as the game unfolded and progressed, you realized, no, they're going to slowly teach these things to you. You're going to learn about what bracers are. You're going to learn what spriggans are. You're going to learn how these different lands have had battles throughout history with different areas. Um, the power struggles over these territories. That's all going to be explained to you as this game unfolds. So, so fear not, newbies. The storyline captivated me right from the very beginning. The game opens with a mystery surrounding a suitcase, which is sought after by multiple factions in the game. You have the guild, then you have a group of men in black style agents, the mafia, and the police officers. And chaos ensues, which is immediate and gripping, sucks you right into the game. Then you have this one intriguing character named Anya. First, I'd like to tell you a little about myself. My name is Anya S. Clodel. She seeks the help of Van Arkride, which is one of the great video game names, Van Arkride. The name's Van. Van Arkride. And I have to admit, I don't know if he's in any of the other games. I have no idea but I love this guy and I love his name. And he is a Spriggan and she goes to meet him to help her retrieve her great grandfather's stolen orbment. Now, what the heck is an orbment? These are these mysterious devices that use orbital energy, uh, which used to produce a wide variety of effects depending on their structure and the type of quartz that's installed inside, which become part of the combat and battle system. So. Yeah, I didn't know any of this, of course, but interesting to learn. But she's on the hunt for this, and she seeks the help of Van Arkride right at the very beginning of the game, and that's where this adventure unfolds. I will say, right out of the gate here, if you're not into dialogue, and you're not into long back and forth dialogue scenes, you are going to hate this game, okay? But if you do appreciate visual novels, where you have to sit through lots of exchanges with different characters, then you will appreciate this game. Uh, there's a lot of combat in this game, but there is a lot of dialogue. And I do know from friends who've told me that the Trails series has a lot of dialogue. There's a lot of pressing the X button to advance the menus. Yes, you can set it to be automatic, which I've done. But if you're not into that thing, then you, I'm just gonna say it, you are not going to like these games. If you just want combat, you're not gonna like these games. I got sucked into this story and really appreciated how it was unfolding, the nuances between these different characters, learning the relationship between Anya and Van Arkride, and then these other members who you learn and develop relationships with, people who've worked with Van Arkride in the past, 
who show up and they have these fun interactions like, oh, you again. You're still on the ball as ever, you spectacled sadist. Same to you, Spriggan. You know, was he in a previous game? I don't know, maybe not, doesn't matter. But you get to see how these relationships have developed and I love the nuances and, and layering uh, uh, of these characters and I think it really comes together enjoyably, nicely, and they don't throw everything at you all at once. So NIS America sent me this game a few weeks ago at the beginning of June. I've been playing it for weeks now and I'm still just a little over halfway through the game. So I'm, that's how long this game is, just to give you a sense of the depth and scope of this game. But as a JRPG fan, you want great combat, and boy does this game deliver. The combat is really interesting, really fantastic, and beautiful animation cutscenes that make this truly enjoyable. It reminds me a bit uh, of the Fire Emblem Engage animations after you activate some big move. You want to see them crushing a crushing blow or a massive fireball come down, right? or fly up into the sky and come down with a big sword swipe. And the combat absolutely delivers in this game. And this is the first time I'd experienced a combat system like this, where you both have a field command system and a battle command system. Let me explain the difference here, because again, this was new to me. So field command combat, you can roll up to an enemy and you can just immediately start swiping your sword, shooting your gun, uh, you know, sh rattling your sabers, using your uh, mage-like wand to, to cast a spell, and you don't have to actually, you know, go into tactical turn-based combat. So you can, this is great for sort of tackling uh, weaker enemies, and, and it's a lot of fun, right? You're avoiding them, you can do dodge and roll out of the way, plus then, of course, you can swipe your sword and do stun attacks, and it's a lot of fun. But then, the real combat is the turn-based sort of tactical battle command system where you use shards. You put shards forth, again, another bit of jargon, to basically stop time and allow the turn-based system to take place. And this is where you can get really into the tactics. You get tactical bonuses, of course, for doing different moves, for joining up and standing side by side with your other team members. Uh, if you're right next to them, you can, uh, you can get bonus attacks where you, you, you carry out an attack and then they follow up with a bonus attack right there. But this is really where you can dial in the different combat between the arts and the crafting system and layering your abilities and, and, and doing some really great things uh, within this battle command system. So I thought this was really unique. You come up to a group of enemies, you think, okay, I'm gonna get a few slashes in here just using some of the field combat system. Uh, but you know what, these guys are a little too strong for field combat, so I'm gonna throw the shards on, I'm gonna turn on my shards, and I'm gonna go into the battle command system and really get particular about how I'm going to make these attacks. And they're just beautiful, and the animations are fantastic. And I just had a lot of fun figuring out how I was gonna beat these different enemies. Let's talk about the music. I felt a lot of times reminded of Xenoblade Chronicles, at least the first game, where you're wandering through the forest, you're going through different sea, sea areas where there's oceans and caves and things like that. And I have to admit that there were quite a few times where I actually fell asleep. I'm gonna go to bed then. Night night. Playing Trails Through Daybreak. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. It was a long day. I was going back and forth through a lot of dialogue. And the piano music was just very calming, very soothing. It's a, there's a beautiful score to this game. And as you progress through many, many hours of the game, I mean, the score changes. You've got really a, a beautiful, beautiful soundtrack to this game. But there were times when it lulled me to sleep. <laughs> and I found myself just kind of zonking out in the chair, which is okay. I've, done, I've definitely done that in other video games as well. So that's not a knock on this at all. It is just to say that the music is peaceful. And if you're like a cozy game, a cozy JRPG fan or a cozy RPG fan, uh, or just a cozy game fan, I think you'd really like this game because the combat is not stressful. Not, you know, it's not overly stressful in any kind of way, but I think a lot of the dialogue and a lot of the world building has a really cozy vibe to it. And that's kind of what I needed for my summer break, you know, uh, a little bit of a cozy, cozy vibe. But the music definitely had some Xenoblade Chronicles flavor for me. For instance, walking through Monfra Forest in Xenoblade Chronicles, you can hear this beautiful, beautiful music here. Just take a listen. Mm -hmm. 
And then here you get these similarities walking through trails through daybreak. Just very peaceful, beautiful, atmospheric music here. Take a listen. So you've got serene piano pieces to intense battle themes. The music really adds a significant emotional layer to this game, and it's one of those soundtracks that you're gonna to wanna to listen to even outside of the gameplay. I wanna get the vinyl of this because there's just some really beautiful moments in the music in this game. While overall my experience with this game has been fantastic, there have been a few gripes, and I want to share them with you right now. Uh, number one, the side quests. Um, this game is so long as it is, just sticking to the main quest. And there are tons of side quests that, I mean, you can go off and do them if you want to. And I said, all right, I'm going to give it a shot. Usually I love to do side quests. Um, but I have to say, the first one I did was a cat quest to go find someone's missing cat. And after about 10 minutes of doing that, I was like, why did I, I just wasted 10 minutes going after a cat? No, <laughs> no. So uh, I, I, I opted really to avoid as many of the side quests as possible. I've done a few of them since, they're okay, but you know, the game is long enough. The side quests are just, you know, feel like padding to me and I don't need to go on any more cat quests. One of my other gripes with the game is just the pacing of the game. Now, I just came off playing Uncharted 1, 2, and 3 back to back to back, and the pacing in those games is flawless. I mean, you're going from combat to climbing to narrative to story cutscenes, I mean, uh, to puzzle solving, back to combat, and it keeps the flow moving nicely. In this game, you're going to be sitting through dialogue that could last. 30 minutes in different clips before you ever get back to combat, 45 minutes before you ever get back to combat. And then there were times where combat lasted an hour before you got back to narrative, before you got back to, to, uh, to the story again. And some of the combat did feel a bit repetitive going through some of the dungeons. They were a little uninspired, kind of empty, um, a lot of the dungeon scenes. And so it didn't really feel like the environments were that rich and inviting. Um, but I've really felt like the pacing in this game could have been better, more, more balanced. You know, dialogue, combat, narrative, upping your abilities, going through the menu system to change things and all of that. Um, I thought it could have been more balanced, to be honest. Here's something else I know is maybe going to frustrate a lot of true JRPG fans, but I'm kind of sick and tired of, like, the gems and quartzes and adding gems and things like that to weapons. It just becomes so cumbersome. Now, I know people love this stuff. I know people love, okay, I gotta take these different pieces of quartz and I've gotta layer them on my different weapons and I've gotta add all of these things into my swords to give them different abilities and all of those things. Like the way you do in Xenoblade Chronicles, you're going through the gem crafting system in the furnace and you're having to build. That, that, that was, to me, one of the weakest parts of Xenoblade. I really could have done without the whole gem crafting. And then here you are in this game with the quartz system, which is complicated. And I really feel like this is the kind of game where it would be great to have a manual. Like back in the day, I would sit and I would have a manual in front of me and I could read through and try to really understand, you know, the quartz system. And okay, how am I gonna layer all these different pieces of quartz in the right way to give my, my sword an upgrade in the right way? And you know, you don't get manuals. You don't, and that really bothers, you don't get guides anymore, you know, and that really bothers me. And I think that could really be helped here. But again, I'm kind of, I'm kind of over it in that way. And I really don't need it. I've been loving playing, you know, Unicorn Overlord, where you don't have any of that. You definitely have upgrades for different weapons and you're getting stronger shields and stronger swords, but you're not having to layer in gems and quartzes and all of that. So, but hey, if you like that kind of thing, and I can see the, the appeal of it, but I'm sitting there for 30 minutes inside of a menu trying to figure out what quartz goes in which slot and I have to open slots and all of that and I'm just not a fan of it. I think after many, many years, I'm just going to admit it. You know how people after they get older, they finally admit they don't like something. I think I'm just going to admit finally, keep the gems and the quartzes out of my JRPGs. I don't need them. I don't like them. Okay, I've said it. I said it.
So Trails Through Daybreak has been a great place for me to jump into this story. It's made me want to go back and play the original Trails games, which is saying a lot. Uh, all of the, a lot of these characters are new. The story arc is new. So is this a good place for someone to jump in and see if they want to experience the Trails series for the first time with all of these refined combat systems and menu systems? And you're getting sort of the, I would say, the best of the best. Like this is like the best of the best Trails experience right now with all the modern combat systems and everything else uh, on a modern console. And if you like it, then great, now's a chance for you to go back and experience some of the other Trails games. So I think it did its job. I can't wait to finish this game. Again, I'm in chapter three right now, about 25 hours into the game. There's five chapters, so I will see this game through. I'm excited to see how this story wraps up. We're now into some really compelling parts of the story that are pretty gripping, and there's quite a few twists and turns that I did not see coming, and I always enjoy that Xenoblade Chronicles style. So, yes, I find the story to be compelling. The combat is really excellent, beautiful, and I'm excited to see more of the Trails series. So I think that's high praise, right? I want to go back and experience some of the earlier Trails games. And, you know, that's a, I think that's a great thing. Uh, this thing's good shit, but it wears you out like nothing else. So let me know down below, are you going to pick up this game, Trails Through Daybreak, the latest in the Legend of Heroes series? Thanks, guys, and thanks for allowing me to be a newbie and playing these games for the first time and, and being nice, okay? <laughs> being nice to me. And we'll see you next time.